Good day, everyone. Today I will review Power Slave the Fifth Studio album by the English heavy metal band Iron Maiden, released on 3rd September 1984 through EMI Records in Europe and Capitol Records in North America. The album's cover artwork is notable for its ancient Egypt theme. That theme, taken from the title track, was carried over to the album's supporting tour, the World Slavery Tour, which is one of the biggest tours ever. The rhyme of the ancient Mariner, 13 minutes and 45 seconds in length, was Iron Maiden's longest song for over 30 years until it was surpassed by the 18-minute Empire of the Clouds from the 2015 album The Book of Souls. Bruce Dickinson vocals, Dave Murray and Adrian Smith guitars, Steve Harris bass and Nico McBrain at drums are playing on this album. It concludes eight songs lengths, 51 minutes. Track number one, Ace's High is an epic song about the high-risk dogfights that took place during World War II. It tells the story from the pilot's perspective as they take off from the runway, dodging bullets and bombs, and engaging in aerial combat against the enemy. The chorus of the song serves to motivate the pilots, urging them to run, live to fly, fly to live, do, or die. The line, Ace is high, refers to the term for skilled pilots who were adept and fortunate at their aerial performances during the war. This song is a masterpiece. Track number two, Two Minutes to Midnight is a song about living in a world on the brink of worldwide destruction by nuclear weapons. The song laments the ways in which people, in an effort to gain control or power, are willing to commit acts of violence against innocent people. The chorus of Two Minutes to Midnight refers to the doomsday clock of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, a symbolic clock that is set to midnight to represent the world being on the brink of nuclear war. It also addresses the idea of power and control, asking the listener to consider who truly benefits in times of unrest. Newbies should definitely check this song out. Track number three, Lost for Words, Big Aura, a great instrumental song which lead us to... Track number four. Flash of the Blade is an exploration of the idea of a heroic individual standing up for justice against evil. The song compares the main character to legendary figures such as St. George and David, who both famously fought evil forces. Through the song, Iron Maiden encourages listeners to stand up for what is right in the face of injustice and to rely on their personal strength and courage to achieve their goals. The chorus of the song conveys the message that even in death, a hero's legacy will live on. Good catchy song with great riffs. Track number five. The song The Duelists by Iron Maiden is about a duel between two opponents, likely with swords. The chorus emphasizes the need for courage and strength to fight for one's life. It also emphasizes that in a duel such as this, it is essential to fight with honor and dignity. Lastly, in the end, one must accept that there may be a tragic outcome. Good solid track, but not as previous. Track number six. Back in the Village appears to be a commentary on war and its aftermath, particularly in the context of civilians and the impact of war on their daily lives. The song opens with the idea of authority figures turning spotlights on people, suggesting that they are being watched and controlled. The lyrics continue with references to violence and destruction, drop your bombs and let it burn. In the chorus, the singer declares that he is back in the village, highlighting the return of war to an otherwise peaceful community. The second verse speaks to the idea of chance and fate, with the singer seeing sixes all the way, while throwing dice. The metaphor of being in a black hole and having one's wings shot away speaks to the confusion and chaos of war. Overall, Back in the Village is a powerful commentary on the destructive impact of war on civilian life and communities. Track number seven, Power Slave, one of the best Iron Maiden songs ever. It is a song about the inevitability of death paints a picture of a figure that confronts the power of death and is accepting of his own mortality. The song speaks about this figure going through the struggles of life and the fear of death, yet still longing for more life to live. The chorus, tell me why I had to be a power slave, I don't want to die, I'm a god, why can't I live on, culminates in the haunting image of being a slave to the power of death. In the end, the message is that death is a powerful force one that no amount of godly power can keep at bay or avoid. Track in number eight. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner mentioned at the start of the video, a 13 minutes and 45 seconds is based on a poem written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge in 1798. The song tells the story of the Mariner's travels, the curse on him, his regret for killing the bird, and the redemption he finds. 
Through the song, the Mariner learns the lesson of respecting nature and appreciating all of God's creatures. The lyrics also draw on references to Christianity and religion, such as God's bless and the pilot's boat and the hermit, highlighting the idea of penance and redemption. In the end, the Mariner is the wiser man, and the story of his journey spreads and lives on. Iron Maiden's Power Slave album is a juggernaut of heavy metal brilliance that showcases the band at the height of their powers. Power Slave is a masterclass in metal. Overall, it is a timeless classic that solidified Iron Maiden's status as one of the greatest metal bands of all time. With its memorable songs, impeccable musicianship, and epic storytelling, it's an album that continues to captivate listeners decades after its release. Leave your thoughts about it, and don't forget to click subscribe button. Until next time, be safe, everybody.